Do you read me? Be advised, you are coming in weak and unreadable. Say again, Con Tower. This is Hacho. Do you read me, Oak? Hacho, this is Con Tower. I read you Lima Char. Con Tower, Con Tower. Request permission to launch in Vanessa Field Up. Over. Stand by. Hacho, permission granted. Say again, permission granted. Hacho that. Launching podcast in three, two. You are now entering the field up with your host, Pacho Correa, Chief Warrant Officer 3, United States Marine Corps retired. Get some. Hurrah! Get some. Hurrah! What's going on, everybody? Another Baby Friday is upon us, or Friday's Eve, as another name I like to refer it. I know it's just a fancy way of saying it. it's fucking Thursday. How about that? The weekend is almost here. Hey, uh, before we get started, just remember that this show is brought to you by Castle Global Services. Castle Global Services has an, ar- an array of different type of um, services for you, both residential and commercial. Uh, one of the w- one of the many things and that we have here at our at our castle here at our at our home is Vivint, uh, basically security services. This is one of the great things that uh, you know they provide, and those folks from Vivint come over here to your house and they do everything. From the setup, they put you know uh, they, they have some great specials going on right now where you get buy one get one free, and basically you just you, you know you finance the equipment. I think it's like two years, very cheap, um, and then you your entire home is automated. The stuff even syncs up with your with our uh, Google Nest, so we can run it all through uh, through our Google um, terminal and such. So check them out. You can go to Castle Global Services acnibo.com and uh you know check check them out and if you are ever interested you know in you know being one a service provider hit them up uh, on there as well and they they have some really good cool stuff uh opportunities uh if you want to be your your own uh online store so and then in addition to that this show is also brought to you by the great american constitution era get some Hey, this show is all about freedom of speech as well as the right to bear arms. And, you know, so what does that mean is that, hey, if you like our show, uh, stick around, like, subscribe and follow. Don't forget to pass me around. Let everybody know about, you know, you know, all the, you know, the cool stuff that we talk about here. And if you don't like it, you know, you can move on yourself and, um, you know, swipe left and check something out, perhaps from from Sitchradio.com. They got a bunch of different shows on there that you can check out and, um, you know, it'll tickle your fancy. Um, you know, I podcast that is a great show as well. Uh, Combat Vet Vision is another one by uh, Chief Siebert, who's been a guest in our show. So give it a try and uh, check it out. And like I said, if not, then like, subscribe and follow. And don't forget to share share me around. So what are we going to, so, you know, I've been thinking, you know, some of um, you know what to talk about uh, on the show today and um so as everybody knows i you know i've been diagnosed or i have been diagnosed for you know several years now uh with ptsd anxiety depression you folks here have heard me you know tell my story uh, as well so but um you know so i was thinking you know well what what can we talk about so and i was like well why don't we talk about and celebrate, uh, I believe, um, was it last month or this month? I think it was last month. Last month was, uh, you know, <laughs> dog month. So what no, What better way not to talk about than to talk about these little, you know, fur ball, four-legged, four-legged fur balls. Let me give them a treat just to keep them, you know, right here. Hey, <laughs> entertain. By the way, this is TAPS, everybody, or PFC TAPS. Uh, he is a little, a little bit of a, of a Roddy Shepherd mix, uh, and his story is is basically uh, our daughter, uh, our daughter who lives in Texas, and who's also hey no no treat, uh, who's also our you know Instagram. She runs our Instagram page for the field. Uh, by the way, don't forget to check check us out on Instagram as well, and uh, drop us a line on there. So. His sto- this guy's little story is basically, we, uh, you know, we, I used to have another service dog. Her name was, her name was Reveille. Uh, 
And the reason why we gave her that name is because in the morning, she wasn't a barker or anything like that. But, uh, you know, for, for whatever reason, we used to live in California, in, in Temecula area, right there by French Valley Airport. She would, uh, you know, in the mornings just bark like about three or four times. So, and so what we used to do is basically, you know, I was like, oh, what, what name? You know, she was still a puppy. And I was like, well, what do we call her? And, and I was like, holy shit, you know, she's sounding reveille. And it just kind of stuck. And let me tell you, that dog was really, 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 really smart, uh, loving, caring. I mean, and we, her and I just bonded. And, you know, uh, as I was, you know, as I retired from the Marine Corps and I was, you know, going through, you know, other things, you know, she, she trained with me and, you know, she became, I, I had made my, into my service dog. And, um, you know, that dog, I mean, got me through some serious, uh, you know, some serious, serious, serious issues in, in my life. Uh, I was going to say serial. I don't know why the fuck I was going to say that. Anyways, um, and I hate to, I, I hate to admit this, but Hey, you know, like, like I said, this, you know, I'm being, I'm just being transparent uh, on this show. Uh, you know, that this is before I stopped drinking. I mean, that dog was, was even my drinking buddy. I mean, she, we, I mean, a few times, you know, her and I, we, you know, we had our, our you know, she used to love beer for whatever reason. Sam Adams, uh, cherry wheat flavor. I don't know. And again, I, I haven't, you know, I haven't been, uh, I've been sober since 2013. And, but, you know, that dog got me through a lot of, a lot of things. And she knew me when I was having, you know, when I started, when I was having my issues, she just knew how to, you know, get me to calm down and, you know, center and, and get grounded again. So now we're doing the same thing. Oh, sorry, buddy. We're doing the same, you know, this little guy right here, he is also, uh, you know, training to be a service dog and he picks up a lot of stuff, you know, really, really quickly. But anyways, uh, Jesus Christ, he's just dying for a treat. So, his story is basically my daughter, who again I said she she runs our, our page. She um, she called me up one day and she sent sent me this picture of this little guy right here, and she's like, "Hey, look, uh, you know, what do you think of, of him?" She had sent me a, a couple before, but I just wasn't ready to move on. And again, you know, Revs was, you know, she still she was such a big part of our life, and it, to this day, still still she is. I mean, hell, I get. Even talking about her, I, I still get all choked up, um, you know. So, but apparently uh, they were going to throw him in the trash dump. You know, those dumpsters, uh, what we call in the Marine Corps, dipsy dumpster. Um, they were going to, you know, two, guy, uh, two guys were going to throw him in there. And nonetheless, uh, she sent me the photo and he just looked too cute on, you know, on that photo. And I was like, just go get him. Uh, the wife wasn't really too thrilled about it. Because obviously, you know, she, you know, she wanted to share this moment. And as you everybody knows here, she's been, uh, uh, you know, working in, in the Middle East. So obviously she would have been, would have, you know, loved being part of the process of, you know, getting, you know, getting one of these little guys and everything. But, you know, not, you know, thank you. When she met him, I mean, she just, and obviously she had fallen, she already, you know, had feelings for him after I, you know, showed him to her over, you know, when we video chat. But when she was here, you know, recently, I mean, she spent a lot of time with him and she just fell in love to pieces with this, with this fur ball right over here, uh, this PFC taps. And, um, you know, he's just grown part, you know, part of our life. You know, it's, it's amazing how these, four-legged creatures <laughs> these four-legged creatures just completely take over our lives and become you know you know such a such a big part of us that you know once you know when they leave and i mean we we pretty much you know we'll pretty much do anything i mean shit you know just pull up any movie i mean hell let's you know look at john wick uh you know shout out to keanu reeves and, and everybody over there but, you know, just look at what we do for, for these animals. I mean, hell, I remember when Reveille, uh, she, she had some knee issues and I ended up giving her, um, I had to, she had to have surgery. And I, I mean, we spent, I spent just about four grand on her surgery. And I mean, I would have spent even more just, you know, just to make sure that she was okay. I mean, wouldn't even have thought twice about it. 
I would have thought twice about it about me if I had to spend four or five grand. I'm like, fuck it, I'll survive. Cut it off. I'm good. If it's free, cut it off. But you know, whatever it is for for them, make it happen. I don't know. You know, it's I don't know why we think that way. You know, so what is what is man's obsession with these with these things and um and you know the close bond that we've had with these animals? I mean, hell, we go back you know, thousands of years and, you know, the, you know, the, you know, the dog is still domesticated. I mean, and you can find, you know, I mean, they found, they, they found remnants and mummified, you know, pets, cats, dogs, among other creatures, you know, that, you know, us humans, we have this attachment to care for another being, you know, like this, you know, I remember growing up in uh, Colombia and just like Cicero Milan, by the way, if you want to read a great, uh, a great book, uh, you know, read the the Pack Leader by Caesar, Caesar Milan. I mean, you know, what a great story. One, uh, him being a, a, an immigrant himself, and you know where, you know, what he's made of himself um, as an individual. Taking all politics out of it, you know, whether you, you know, <clears throat> you know, initially when he came, yeah, he was legal, but the dude, you know, now became a, you know, legal and blah blah. But, you know, what a great story one, uh, that uh, and two. But, you know, how what, what he talks about, about th these animals, because he grew up in Mexico. I grew up in Colombia. He grew up at a farm. So did I. You know, dogs to him or to his family were an, an extension of that rancher, which was the same case for us. I mean, I remember my dad had a special whistle for just about every fucking thing. And that and, and whatever the dog. You know, you know, he knew, you know, whatever whistle it went, you know, that dog knew how to go left, right, slow, crawl, you know, backflips, you know, bark, don't bark, nip at the legs of the, of the cow, don't nip, you know, you know, get your ass over here. I mean, you know, it was just, it was just crazy to see him. I think that's why now that I think about it, you know, to some degree, my kids were whistle trained. You know, they just knew my whistle. And so when they were kids, we were at, we're, whether we were at a park or whatever, they just knew my whistle. They could, they would just like pop out like little friggin', you know, prairie dogs. Like, like whoa, whoa, hey, papi, who, me, Joe? Yeah, that's me. You call, oh, oh, yeah, you're calling me. I'll be right there, you know. But yeah, and now that I think about it, my daddy just did the same shit to me. But, you know, what? getting back to the point is that these, these little animals are, you know, they, for for ranchers, there's such a you know re extension of them here in the U.S. I mean, you know, you use cat. You know, there's you know there's cattle dogs for cattle. There's you know for herding sheep. I mean, these these animals. I mean, and they they pick it up. So you know, our infatuation. I guess not infatuation. I think our relationship uh, between man and an animal. I mean, goes. It's very deeply rooted, as well as it goes back uh, uh, a really long time. So, you know, to the point that you know, nowadays, I mean, these animals not only are they great, uh, they become service dogs, and uh, you know, and they help us. You know, they help individuals with you know turning on the who are who have mobility issues with turning on the lights. Turning them, you know, turning them off, getting things, uh, reaching for things, opening doors, buttons, you know, you name it. To you know, individuals like myself, that as we're having issues, you know, they know they're just so in tune with us. And obviously, we, you know, we you can train them that way. Where you know they'll, you know, if you're having a trigger or a moment, uh, they just know, you know, they'll sit, ne you know, next to you and they want you to engage with them. I know that's what you know. Even you know, in in the in the months that we've been, you know, him and I have been together. I mean, he just knows that. Hey, I think he's having an issue, or he seems like he's down. He, you know, he'll just wanna, you know, he'll come on my, he he'll stand on my lap or sit in front of me and then put his paws on on my lap, and then he'll just you know start licking me and just want me to engage with him to just kind of get my mind off. And be, believe you me, uh, it's it's been a blessing. To say the least, um, it's been you know these last few months. Uh, one, you know, without the companionship of of the wife being gone, uh, you know, just you know these four walls and uh, 
ruminating thoughts, uh, the four walls start shrinking in on you and just these other thoughts just start kind of, you know, getting the best of you. And no, no, you know, you could try to fight them and do other things, but it's good to have some, you know, um, a, a battle, bu a battle buddy, you know, that can help you, um, you know, go through those things and, you know, get you, you know, get your head in, 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 the, in the right place. You know, so as, as you see, you know, I know a lot of us here, um, on our show, you know, you've seen other veterans walking around the stores. Um, not so much here in, 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 in Florida where, where, where I'm at, but I know in California, you, you know, I see quite a, quite a few fellow veterans, um, you know, with their animals, you know, out and about. And, you know, again, you don't engage, you know, because again, you know, me having to be in, you know, having one myself and being exposed to other veterans that had animals, you know, service animals, you know, you don't engage with them. You don't look at them. You don't call them. As a matter of fact, most of the time I would just go the other way. I'm like, Hey, you know what? If they're in a grocery aisle, I would just go the other way. Uh, so as not to, you know, cause I know that dog is working. It's the bottom line. So if you ever see somebody out there and they, they got their dog um, and all that stuff, don't, don't call them. Don't click at, you know, don't do little clicking noises. Don't do, you know, all the, you know, all this other dumb shit that you think that, oh, hey, or, or even ask, you know, hey, can I pet your dog? Uh, you know, whatever. That animal is working. Obviously, that individual has, there's some anxieties. Uh, I know, I, know I uh, you know, going into crowds and that type of stuff, I still have to work through that. So having, the, having him around just kind of, you know, it kind of helps because I'm so focused on him that, uh, nope, <laughs> he's a, <laughs> I got a bag of tricks behind me. I mean, uh, treats. So, you know, that I'm so focused on him that, you know, it just kind of helps me navigate through all those things. So, you know, and he, so he, here's here's where uh, things kind of get, um, I guess, tricky for for, uh, for lack of better words. We were at, you know, one. So a couple of weeks ago, we were, we were out and about. You know, he's wearing, he's wearing his vest. By the way, uh, if you look at the... You know the ADA Act, uh, and on the portion where it talks about, or you know where it talks about service animals, you know they don't have to wear a, a vest and and you know the red vest with the whole service animal. They don't. It the, nowhere does it does it say that that you know these animals have to wear any of that shit. As a matter of fact, that stuff is on there for you for or for you know for everybody else but that owner. It's just you know it says don't pet me. Don't. It, it's it's out there. So, you know. For a reason. So, you know, my dog, you know, I bought him one of those, but not a red vest, but I bought him, you know, one that looks, he looks very tactical. Uh, I mean, it looks like he, he might as well just have sappy plates because it looks like a little, like a little mini flak jacket. Anyways, uh, so PFC Taps and I were just hanging out and chilling at the T Mobile store, doing our thing. And, um, you know, as I walk into the store, this guy is, oh, hey, then is that your dog? I'm like, you know, and I'm like, yeah, you know, he is. Oh, what kind of breed? And I just, you know, I'm, I'm trying to tell him. And and he tries, to, he, he tries to call my dog. And I was just like, okay, I'll let it slide this time. But he's got, and again, he's got his, um, you know, his vest. And it's got patches that says, don't, you know, please stop. Don't look at, you know, don't engage me, blah, blah. I'm working. I'm a service dog. Right. So I on purpose went over there to the back of the store um, to just sit down and wait my turn. And, you know, he he sat, you know, he's just there. We're just hanging out. It's my turn. We're talking to, you know, the individual that's helping us out. Great kid, by the way. Shout out to Jay at T-Mobile and uh, in the Bird Road and 57th area. We're just, you know, we're talking. And the, the dude, you know, he tried, he calls my dog. You know, he, I mean, this time he, it was just like, you know, he makes, you know, that little clicking noise that people make. I don't want to make it right now because if not, you know, PFC, you know, a little PFC over here will think it's calling him and then he'll, he'll get all um, riled up again. Anyway, so I just looked at the individual and just, I'm going to say, it, just like I said it to him, for you viewers. And throw, you know, tell me in the comments, maybe if I was wrong, but this is what I said. Hey, man, can you please do me a favor? Stop calling my dog. It's just that he's working right now. And, uh, you know, I just don't want him to get distracted. That's pretty much how I said it. Just kept doing my business. And, uh, 
you know, whatever. So after about maybe five minutes, the dude turns around. He looks at me again. We're inside the store. He looks at me. He goes, "Hey, man, I didn't like the way you told you you you, you told me that." Uh, you know, and I, you know, doing the, you know, the jarhead thing. I mean, I, I had already, you know, when I come, you know, I know a lot of us can relate. We pretty much size up the area. We just kind of look around for things. Okay, so I had, you know, the dude was about, you know, I'm five seven and a half, five eight according to the Marine Corps. Uh, the dude was about six foot tall, middle-aged dude. You know, I guess we're about the same age, but a little bit heavier. So I know that, you know, the guy doesn't really maintain himself. I'm like, okay, whatever. So I just looked at him and like, you know, he said, hey, he basically, hey, I don't, I, I don't like the way you, you, you know, you talk to me. The way you told me that, I said, what do you mean? I said, please. And I'm, again, I'm talking to him just like this. I said, what do you mean? I said, please. And I, and I said, don't engage my dog. He's working. He's a service dog. You know, he's got patches and shit on him. I mean, I didn't say shit, but as well, you know, just, you know, I just, I'm like, you didn't say please. I'm like, yes, I did. I said, I, I said it, I, I said it and, and said, don't engage my dog. So I had to, I had to go, you know, use the restroom, but they didn't have one in the store. So I was going next door and I said, and I told the kid, Hey, I'll be right back. And as I'm walking past by this dude, he leans into me and he goes, by the way, I do whatever the fuck I want. And I just stopped. And he's right here. And I just stop and I just look up and I said, now, you know, by this time I'm, I'm, can, I'm kind of already getting, you know, riled up and, you know, for whatever reason, you know, again, taps just comes, he automatically sits in front of me and he looks at me and I just, you know, I just, I put my head down and I looked at him and I was like, you know, pretty much I said, all right, fine, whatever. And I was just like, I kind of surrendered. I was like, okay. So I just, you know, I didn't, I just kind of like, you know, turned my head sideways and I looked at the guy and I said, look, man, I did 21 years in the Marine Corps. And um, there's a reason why I have this animal. And according to the American Disability Act, and I could put, you know, he he can come wherever, wherever I go. So I don't want any trouble. So that being said, this conversation is done. I'm going to go ahead and walk away. And that's that. So I kept, you know, I walked away and, you know, he, the guy tried to engage me one more time. And I just turned around and said, hey, man, it's done. We're done. Conversation's over. Okay. So I went, you know, I went, went to the bathroom, came back. But as I walked by him, I, you know, I made sure I looked at him dead in the eyes. And I just finished my business, you know, finished my, you know, my transaction at the store. And that was it. But, you know, you know, it's, it, it amazes me. Kind of goes back to the things, the things that we're dealing with today, where you know people, people just, you know, don't like being told no. Oh, you know that doesn't align with me. So, you know, it's my truth, or you know, and again, I'm not trying to get into politics and whatever, but this whole my truth, your truth, there isn't such a thing. It's the truth. But you know, again, getting back to the point is like people don't like being told no, and um, you know, I almost got into an altercation. Now, had I come back, and again, I, I chose to walk away. The you know the earlier me, and the guy who's had issues in the past, where you know anger issues, where I bla- I, I blacked out on the street, and you know you can pretty much well nobody knows here my kid's mom or my my former spouse, but you know she can tell you just you know how you know how shit in the past would have escalated really quickly without even thinking twice. And, you know, luckily, you know, I was able to, you know, Taps was there. He kind of, he helped, helped diffuse the situation, you know, because in the end, it's not worth it. It's not, you know, probably the legal repercussions that could have happened. And, you know, uh, you know, I could have heard that individual because I know I would have hands down. I mean, and, and, and two, you know, going to jail, the legalities and all the other things, it just, Maybe in the immediate, in the immediate gratification might have, you know, yeah, might have been great. But, you know, on the back end, all the other things that just one little ripple, one little stone on the lake, um, you know, one, once you cast that stone and that little ripple, you know, commences, it just a lot of things could have, you know, led to just other trouble that it just wouldn't have been worth it. So I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that he was there. Um, I'm proud of myself for being able to walk away on, of that entire situation. So, uh, but yeah, so the point I'm trying to make people is that, 
you know, when you see somebody and even train your kids that, oh, no, look at the puppy. No, it's, he's not a puppy or that dog is that dog is working, is doing something. So, you know, let, you know, be give that pe people their space. Uh, you know, we were at the grocery store uh, last night and, you know, an individual, uh, I think he might have been prior service, but he saw, you know, he saw I was kind of looking at paper towels and, you know, he Taz was just sitting there waiting. And the dude, the dude is, in, in, you know, the dude, turn, you know, he saw my dog and I think their eyes met and he just, he, hey, I'm going to, you know, he said, I'm going to walk away because, you know, I know you're working and, you know, but you're cute as hell. <laughs> I just, I, I told him, I looked at the guy and said, hey, man, I, <laughs> thank you. I appreciate it. He goes, I know, I know, you know, I know, I know he's working. So, so shout out to that guy at the, at the store for, for doing that. So again, you know, train your kids uh, and, you know, give, give them, give them their space because, you know, those individuals uh, and I'm not, I'm not putting myself in a pedestal and whatever. I'm just saying that, you know, there's things that there's a reason why, you know, those folks have those animals to help them. And, you know, one of the great benefits that, um, you know, over, you know, once I, it's just, I, I've really, you know, flying has never been my thing. So I've been able to, he's been able to come with me on, on flights, uh, you know, where, you know, he just kind of sits there on, on top of my feet, just hangs out. And, you know, it just, it, it's, it's a really, it's a real blessing, you know, having the, having his company, you know, along the way. Uh, so, Yeah. And, you know, we're going to get to, you know, do other things and travel in. But, you know, it's amazing how some of these. Uh, so I don't know if I finished the story, but basically how my daughter found them is basically uh, these crackheads. They were going to throw them in a dumpster. And um, and, you know, so but it's like, you know, little mixed animals are, and, and even our Doberman, who is, by the way, you know, pure, you know, pure breed Doberman. Uh, we found her at a, at a pound. It's amazing how and you know, I'm not just, you know, my brother's a breeder and, uh, and again, you know, great job to people who breed dogs and, you know, and they sell for a living and, and all that stuff. But, you know, these little guys right here, these rescue animals, it's like, they go the extra mile uh, to work for you. I mean, he picks up, you know, the, the things that I'm trying to, you know, show him to help me, help me with, he picks it up really quickly. It's like, Hey, look, you know, it's like, they really want to, sh you know, show you what they can do. I mean, he's just hanging out right here, uh, doing doing his thing. Uh, I mean, he's he's getting kind of hungry because you know his his dinner time. Uh, we're kind of half an hour past his dinner, but you know these these, these little guys are just um, they work so hard, and um, you know, and I'm I'm thankful for what he you know the help that he's given me, and I'm I'm you know hopefully here with the next couple of you know days or you know in a week or two that i can start bringing him to work so that way you know when i'm more i'm, a, I'm at work and you know some of the <laughs> some of the civilians just do their their thing just to leave it leave it as that you know he can help me out just to you know help out with that because you know as i as i even put earbuds in or airpods and uh, just sometimes that shit doesn't work and i know if he was there it would help out just a little bit more but so yeah, I wanted to give a no much. Come here, Taps. Come here. Come here. Atta boy. Come here. Up. Atta boy. Just wanted to give an homage to you know man's man's best friend. And I, I do believe that these little guys um are just uh you know they say you know they Somebody, I read somewhere that you know these little you know these little guys and gals you know that they 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 live so short you know such a short lifespan is to help us also cope and transition uh, with death and and they also teach us in that in that aspect as well so um, you know these little guys are you know are just great and you know I'm thankful for it so you know yeah. So, but that's it for today, folks. So with that being said, you know, before we get out of here, uh, I'd like to also, hey, if you've been struggling with um, anxiety, depression, rumination, and just all the other stuff that, you know, life sometimes tends to throw at you, uh, and you don't have somebody, you know, you know, one of these little guys 
to help you cope and and through through any of that stuff, then I I encourage you, you know, to reach out to me, reach out to a friend, reach out to you know one of the organizations like the VA, Military One Source, Tricare, uh, Suicide Hotline. Just reach out to somebody, you know, while doing push-ups and you know rucksack challenge and you know you know 50 mile march you know hikes all cool and supportive and whatever you know we just can't stand losing losing another brother or sister over the suicide because every problem does have a solution you know that's the bottom line so uh just want to say thank you and uh you know let, let me at least be your last phone call and we can work through shit out all right but with that being said folks just want to say we're going to index. Hurrah, get some, and I'll see you next week.